And at that point, my husband got up for the last time. And this, this, the one attacker said, just kill him, brother. And they shot him in the head, execution style, in front of us. And he literally fell at my feet on his face. You are cutting the throat of what is it? All land in South Africa, all of it belongs to us and all of it was stolen from us. And when I say us, I'm talking about black people in this country. We've not called for the killing of white people, at least for now. I can't guarantee the future. I'm Maria Andre Yenas. I am a widow of a farm attack. Before the attack, we were a normal, happy family living on a small holding outside of Pretoria. We had three little girls, or have three little girls. They were aged six, four, and two years old. Um, I was eight months pregnant with our son at the time of the attack. What I do remember as a child growing up on a farm is the fear about farm attacks. I remember lying in bed at night, hearing cracks outside, and it's just a branch falling off a tree. And you, you're absolutely convinced there's someone with a machete outside your window and he's about to, to hack you to death. You, you hear about these horrific stories and you really hope it never happens to you. And somehow you also never expect it to happen to you until it does. We had a lady working on the farm whose grandparents were murdered and they were beaten. They were very old people. They were severely beaten. They were dragged around the house. The entire house was, was soaked in blood. Her grandfather eventually, after being tortured for several hours, he was shot in the face with a shotgun. In October 2016, the 1st of October, uh, we were woken by the sound that the police explained to me was the cocking of the gun. And as I sat up, the two attackers were standing at my feet with the gun pointed at me already. We fell asleep in the living room in front of the television, both my husband and myself and my six-year-old daughter, my oldest daughter. And as I <clears throat> sat up and saw them, they started screaming and shouting at us aggressively. Uh, my husband and I both explained to them that we do not have money in the house. If that is what they want, they can take anything of value. They can take anything they want if they just leave us unharmed. My husband even explained to them where the valuables are. And the one guy said, this man is a killer and he's here to kill you. And uh, he started shooting and my husband was shot. <laughs> five times right next to me. He kind of rolled off the couch. They shot at my daughter, who started running around hysterically screaming. They missed, thankfully. And they came to grab me up off the couch to take me downstairs, to which I refused, because in these farm attacks, if they take you aside, they rape you and then they kill you. My daughter literally put a little hand up and said, I've got a piggy bank, I've got money, you can take my money. And I just wanted the floor to swallow her. I didn't want them to look at her, I didn't want them to see her. And at that point, my husband got up for the last time. And he said to them, please. It sounded like he was crying when he said that. And my daughter afterwards told me that he literally was crying and there was blood coming out of his ears and his nose and everywhere. Um, and this, this, the one attacker said, just kill him, brother. And they shot him in the head, execution style, in front of us. And he literally fell at my feet on his face. Um, they came to me again and put the gun to my head and asked me where the other children are. And I asked them, please, just, just leave. You've done enough and um, they left. The only thing they took was our mobile phones so that I couldn't phone for help. And um, that is where our new life started. To them, they killed a man. To us, they took everything. He was our breadwinner. He was the father of my children. He never got to meet his unborn son. Um, and now I'm left to be the mommy, the daddy, the provider, 
and some good has to come from this bad. There's a climate in South Africa in which violence is romanticized actively, even up to the state president. Um, and and it's, it's romanticized and it's, it's encouraged. The white minority which took our land by force. You must say enough is enough. We are taking the future into our own hands. Shoot to kill. Kill our Shoot to kill. Yamasa. Kiss. The taking of land from the indigenous people of this country was the original sin. The government dismisses it. The government denies that it's happening. Our own president came to New York in September and he stated in an interview with Bloomberg There are no killings of farmers or white farmers in South Africa. Uh, there's no land grab in South Africa. We are involved in a process of discussing land reform. We don't have the luxury anymore of standing by and watching and hoping that things would get better. You have to become involved in some way. And that's how I became involved with AfriForum. We completely regard ourselves as Africans. We have no other home. We don't. I've been to Europe. I didn't feel like I was. I went home. I've been to the U.S. Um, I love the people in the U.S., but we're not Americans. We're not Europeans. We're Africans. Um, so there are people leaving the country. There are many people leaving the country, but the vast majority would stay behind. Um, and the Afrikaners, as they are known today, or the Boers, as they are known across the world regard themselves as Africans and we need to find a solution for our problems in Africa. Leaving the country is only making it worse for those who stay behind and it's not going to solve the problem, it's only making it worse. I was born in South Africa, South Africa is my home. My family for many generations have lived in South Africa.